greetings everyone and welcome to today's Victory Church Online. It is so good to have you guys with us today. I'm excited about the message that we have for today. <clears throat> Something God's really laid onto my spirit and my heart. And I'm really anticipating giving this word. But before I do, let me just go over some church business really quick, if I may. Uh, we're thankful for all those who give and are supporting the ministry on a weekly basis and uh, on a recurring basis. We're just so grateful. Uh, your gifts that you give allow us to do and continue to do uh, everything that we're doing even now. So we just want to thank you very much. And if you'd like to give and you don't know how to or where to do it at, you can simply go to www.todaysvictory.com and there's a gift button right there and you hit it and it'll take you down to the gift module. You can also do it by text. There's, you'll see a number right there and you can text give and it'll take you straight to that module on your phone and you can give that way and you can mail it to us. You can mail it to 300 Spring Hollow Road, Goodlettsville, Tennessee, 37072. And we appreciate all those who are giving and participating in helping us. God bless you guys so much. Now I want to bring a message this morning that's been resting in my heart. The church being resilient. The simple title of the message today is Resilient. And to begin that, I want to take a very familiar passage of Scripture in the book of Psalms. And I need to read it in its entirety, but I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to read portions of it, and I'll let you follow along with me. Psalms chapter 18, I want to begin in verse 2. The Bible reads this way, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer. Hallelujah. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Somebody say hallelujah. Verse 4. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. And in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from His temple, and my cry came before Him, even to His ears. As I read this passage right here, I'm reminded of the greatness of our Heavenly Father, of the greatness of, of our God. As we read through verses 2 through 6, and it read about how my cry came into the ears of, of the Heavenly Father. My voice cried out from His temple, and He heard my cry. The verses right after that began to sp speak about God hearing the cry, and thunder and lightning began to flash across the skies, and darkness became under His feet, and He brought the heavens down low because He heard my cry, and He came in to rescue me. That's when we pick up verse 31, where we say, "For Who is God except the Lord? And while we go to verse 46, where we say, The Lord lives, blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. As I read these passages, the title of our message begins to resound in my heart and my spirit. Is that this, are, this is the words of a man who is resilient. These are the words of a man <clears throat> who is resplendent. And so before we go on, I want you to understand what resilient means, and I need you to understand the definition of resplendent. So we can begin to understand how we need to respond and how we need to act during these times that we're in right now, because God wants us to be resilient. And God wants us to be resplendent. The word resilient defined is very simple. It simply means to withstand 
or recover from a difficult situation or difficult conditions. It means that we can recover from those things. You, you get through it and you're still standing and you're still strong and you're still there. You're still strong and you're still there because you're, you are resilient. The next word that we need to look at before we go any further is the word resplendent. It's an old word that is not used very often any longer, but it is a very powerful word. And a word that needs to be associated with the children of God and the church. And the word resplendent is defined this way. Attractive and impressive through shining forth brightly. In other words, when we are resplendent, we are a bright light. We shine brightly in the midst of a dark time or a dark place or in the place of darkness. We shine very brightly. And my friend, we find ourselves in uncertain times and we find ourselves in dark times. We find ourselves now in times where fear begins to rule and mobs begin to rule and we don't know what tomorrow holds. But God has called us as a church not only to be resilient, not only to stand strong throughout the circumstance and the situation, but also to be resplendent. That while we walk through these times and these situations, that we walk through and we are a light that shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. Now that's a good word. But as I begin to think about the words resilient, and as I begin to think about the word resplendent, a thought comes to my mind, and I'm, I recall my father who's been gone from us for a while now. And as I think of these two words, it reminds me of my father. I did not agree with my father on everything that he did. I didn't agree with every decision that he made. But one thing I knew about my father is that he was a man after God's own heart. It wasn't about whether I agreed with every decision he made or every choice that he made in his life or even in ministry. But I knew that even every choice and every decision and every direction that he chose, he was still a man after God's own heart. And that he was a resilient man. And that he was a resplendent man. A man that shone a light in the darkness. As we look into the Bible, a resilient spirit is found all throughout the Bible. Job was resilient through sorrow and suffering. Jeremiah was resilient despite the persecution against his message to the people. The Apostle Paul was resilient through persecution and prison. But all these men, including my father, all these men had one thing in common. They never lost sight of the majesty of God. Their ability to be resilient was tied closely to their esteem of God. And the church that we are in today needs to rise. The church that we have today, we need to rise and be resilient in these uncertain times that we live in. We need to be a church that recognizes the, the majesty of our Heavenly Father. We need to be a church that recognizes His majesty. Why, Pastor Allen? Because your spiritual life and your walk with God will never go beyond your view of God and will never go beyond your view of His majesty. We have substituted His majesty for selfish ambition in the name of God. And we have traded His majesty for messenger worship. We worship the messenger instead of the sender of the message. Our lofty concept of God has become subtle, a subtle sidebar in our lives. It seems like our churches continue to grow externally. But we are suffering great loss internally. 
It seems that our buildings and our budgets get bigger and bigger and bigger, but yet the people inside the building are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. What are you saying, Pastor Allen? I want you to listen to me. We need to get in sight once again of His Majesty. And when I speak of the church and I say the word church, I'm not speaking of a denomination or an organization. I'm speaking to the actual church. I'm speaking to the people, the children of God. So when I say the church, I'm speaking to you. So when I'm speaking to you, be understood that the church of today is easily persuaded. It's become the church of the easily persuaded. It's become the church of the selfish ambition. It's become the church of what I can get. It's become the church of bless me and give me. The church today needs to rise up and be a resilient church. It needs to rise up and be a resplendent church. You see, the Christ child, when he was born, he's threatened by King Herod at his birth. And out of the, and though he's being threatened by his birth, there was a divine intervention that allowed him to survive. As we go further in the life of Christ, he's speaking in the temple and the crowds become angry and they take their hands upon him and they take him and they drag him out of the temple to throw him off of a cliff. And the Bible tells us that Christ passed through the crowd. There became a divine intervention that allows him to pass through the midst of those who are trying to harm him. At the crucifixion, they beat Him, they crucified Him, and they mocked Him in His death. But in divine intervention, even through the crucifixion and the death that He died upon that cross, divine intervention allowed Him to descend into the earth, take captivity captive, conquer death, hell, and the grave, and rise again on the third day. How is that possible? Divine intervention. Christ was resilient and Christ was resplendent. We are so focused today in the church in our society on masks and vaccines. And here's what I hear said. The mask, the symbol of fear, the tool of manipulation of an out-of-control authority. The vaccine is a gateway to the mark of the beast. And that's what's being said. And where those things could be true. But while we're focused on these things, we are missing the point. We have been distracted and we're missing the point. I want to refer back to Daniel when the king gives the decree for Daniel, or gives the decree for no one to pray except to, to the king's to the king. And we see Daniel's prayer after the king's command not to pray. He kneels anyway and he prays. But we miss the point. His prayer that he prayed that day after the king's decree was not a prayer of defiance against the king, it was a prayer of obedience to the King of Kings. You see, the point that we're missing today by the righteous mob out there just saying whatever's on their mind and by the absent church that is actually saying nothing at all. You see, it's not about the masks and it's not about the vaccines at all as a children of God. This is about the church rising up in obedience instead of defiance and rising up in obedience to our Heavenly Father, and being a light in the darkness. Today we need, as a church and as a people of God, we need to stand and be resilient and obey the call of God. We need to be resplendent and be a light in this darkness. 
This is about a spiritual warfare that's being raged right now even as I speak. This is not about the church crying out for deliverance so that we can go back to the same way we were, comfortable, satisfied, and doing nothing. This is about the church moving from just crying out to God and bowing down to our Heavenly Father. Not bowing down to the ever-changing tide of popular opinion and governmental authorities that change your mind like the wind. But we as a church need to become resilient and meet the challenges of today's society. Not by rising up, but by bowing down. Not bowing down to the governmental authorities, but bowing down to our Heavenly Father. The resilient church will sing when there is no song to sing. The resilient church will stand when there's nothing to stand on. The resilient church will move beyond just crying out and begin to bow down. Why? Because we are in desperate need of a divine intervention. And divine intervention become, comes when we become resilient and we become resplendent. I had a vision the other day while I was praying. And in that vision, I saw the throne of God and, in the th and I saw a wide picture from the throne of God. And in that throne, I saw the children of God around the throne and they were crying out for deliverance. But between the people of, the, the people of God crying out for deliverance and the throne of God, there was another band of people and they were arguing, they were fighting. For, for earthly power and, 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 and money and gain, all kinds of things. They were fighting for authority and power. Some of them were people of the world. Some of them were Christian people. Some of them were children of God. But there was a ring of people outside crying out. And as I looked, I said, what in the world's going on? I looked up at the throne of God and, the right, and at the right hand of God, the seat of Christ was gone. He, he was not there. And I began to wonder, where was Christ? And I looked back down around the, the crowd that was around the throne. Then I saw Christ come walking through and He passed through the midst. And as He passed through the midst, many of those who were crying out, passed through the midst with Christ. And Christ sat at the right hand of the Father. And when I looked back down at the throne, at the people around it, the people were still out. Some were crying out. And there were still some people sitting there fighting over power and greed. And, but now there were children of God who were bowing down at the throne. I want you to listen to me. It was a word for us today. It's time for us to stop crying out and for us to pass through the midst of all the mess that's going on around us and begin to bow down and grab a hold of God's majesty and become resilient and resplendent. And there's our, those who are listening to me right now, you've been crying out. You've been crying out for deliverance. But God is calling you to bow down to His majesty. There is a tremendous struggle between you and your prayer to God. There's a great commotion and you just keep crying out. But I'm speaking to you today and I want you to listen to me. I want you to hear this. Christ is passing through the midst. And it's time to stop crying out long enough to take His hand and let Him bring you through this tremendous struggle. Let Him bring you through this great commotion. 
and take you from crying out to bowing down. Because when you bow down to the majesty of our Lord, of our, of our Heavenly Father, that's where divine intervention begins to take place. You see, it's time to stop being a struggling saint and become a resilient saint. It's time to stop becoming a struggling saint and become a resplendent saint. And God's speaking to you right now. You're uncertain about the things going around you. Your life is falling apart. Some of it's not of your own making and some of it is of your own making. But regardless of how you got there, your life is falling apart. And you need a divine intervention. This morning I want to challenge you to move beyond just crying out for deliverance so you can just go back to the way you were. And take the hand of Christ today and allow Him to pass through your struggle, pass through your commotion, and bow down at the feet of His throne and begin to grab a hold of His majesty. Can I ask you a question? How can you go wrong how can you be misled? How can you make a wrong turn if you're staring into the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ? If you are staring into His majesty? If your eyes are never diverted and you're staring headlong into His majesty, how can you go wrong? My friend, your answer is only measured by your view of God and His majesty. And God is calling you to stop crying out and begin to bow down. He's calling you to be resilient and resplendent, to be a light in the darkness, to stand when you can't stand, and to bow to His throne and His majesty. And watch the divine intervention of God take place in your life and your situation. And what everybody says could not happen or cannot be. When God gets a hold of it, it can change everything. No matter how dark. I want to pray with you. And I want you to join with me. Father, I just thank you for your goodness, Father, your grace and your mercy. I thank you for this word. I ask, Father, that you speak to each and every person, Father, right now. There's people going through such dark times right now. Father, I pray for the church, the absent church that's silent. Father, and the righteous mob that just spewing out whatever's on their heart and their mind, and many times to the detriment to those that are around them. And teach the church, Father, to stop crying out and begin to bow down to your majesty. Father, that, that when we pray and when we stand, it's not in defiance of authorities, but it's in obedience to You. Because You are our final authority. Father, those experiencing dark times right now, Father, uncertainties, and they're just crying out, Father, right now, pass through the midst of their commotion, pass through the midst of their trouble, Take a hold of their hand, Father. I'm praying for you right now. You're listening to me right now. Christ is passing through your midst right now as we're praying. He's reaching out to take your hand, but you have to take His hand also. Now, Father, as they take their hand, as they take your hand, as you pass through the midst, Father, lead them to the throne. And Father, I pray for those who, who are listening to me and, and have actually done what I'm asking them to do, Father, as they bow down before your throne and cry out for your majesty. 
Father, I ask for divine intervention began to take place in their situation and their circumstance. And we speak it forth, Father, now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we agree upon it as a fellowship of believers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Powerful message today. I want to encourage you not to cry out, but to bow down. Not in defiance, but out of obedience to your heavenly Father, which is our final authority. Allow Christ to allow you to pass through the commotion and the struggle and begin to grab a hold of His majesty and watch things change in your life. Hallelujah. Well, thank you guys for being with us today. God bless you. Remember, you can go to our website, www.todaysvictory.com. The message is right there, right now. If you have friends that don't have Facebook, they can grab the message right there. Please like this, share it, and send people over to the webpage. God bless you guys, and we will see you Wednesday night.